All right, we back here in my little ready-made shop. And I just realized something. I never did show y'all the differences between a port enclosure and a horn enclosure. I know y'all looking and you're seeing the, the size. You're like, man, this one, I don't know how y'all, how it's going to video going to show, but one on one side, is that a port? Because that port looks like it's three times the size of the port enclosure. And it is. But see, the port enclosure, the port enclosure, it has back pressure. It, it, it's a different principle. What's a port enclosure works off what's called a hem holtz resonator. H-E-M-H-O-L-T-Z. You're actually recycling that back wave that's made when the cone goes forward it makes bass and when it goes backward it makes bass. Well that's what your bass reflex is taking that backward reflex and recycling it and tuning it with the length based on the volume and the port area. And this is your port area. So y'all understand that port area is the height times the width. The height times the width. Okay. Based on the cubes, you want to have a certain amount of port area. If you get an MBE box, your port area is going to be commensurate of the size of the sub. And the BL, the MS, and the QTS of the subwoofer. So that's going to vary on how much port area you can get. I, in my boxes, I go for the biggest port area that you can get. With 12s, that tends to be, be between 14 and 16 on average, but really leaning towards 16. Uh, with 15s and 18s, then I go above 16 cubes. We go like 16, 18, 16, 17, 18, even at times 19. In fact, that two cube, that, that them two 15 boxes that I just sent out, both of them had 18 square inches of port area per cube. That's why the ports were so big. I don't know if y'all remember that, that, that video. I think it was right before this, before last. Now, a horn box, it's a totally different principle at play. A horn box is, they, it, it, it makes bass, but it actually projects sound. Okay, when I say it projects sound, uh, you know, okay, you put a ported box inside a trunk and you open up the trunk, what happens? The bass has nothing to bounce off of you lose output. That doesn't happen with a horn enclosure. With a horn enclosure, because it has its own loading chamber, and that's what this back wall is. This back wall is the loading chamber for a horn. But if you notice the back wall, for that loading chamber for that horn, which looks to be, if you look at it, it's, man, that's, that's not deep into the box. Actually, no, it cuts about right here. Yeah, it cuts about right here. With that loading chamber, is that enough airspace? If you do this in a base reflex, look how much space airspace you have there. But you said in a horn enclosure, that's the loading chamber, but it's nowhere the size of that. That's because it's a different principle at play. In a horn enclosure, it's the length of the horn, the folds that you have inside, they get gradually louder on each turn until it culminates to the horn mouth. See, that's called a port. This is a horn's mouth. The horn mouth must be greater than, I mean equal to or greater than the SD, which is the speaker diaphragm of the woofer that is, is using to project the sound. So here is greater. It's like 30% larger than the SD of the round circular sub. Uh, if you look at this principle, it's, it's almost like the kicker Cone area, the kicker, this would be a kicker 12 against a traditional 12 inch subwoofer. You see how much more cone there you have? 20% more. Well, in a horn enclosure, the horn mouth must be great, equal to or greater than the SD of the cone. And what it does is, depending on how many folds and the frequency you're trying to attain, it projects sound. And because it has its own loading chamber, when you open up the trunk with a horn enclosure, the base doesn't go anywhere. The base does what a port enclosure cannot do. The base just travels even further. Horn enclosures are predominantly, predominantly used in concerts. When you go to a concert, I don't know you listen to Moneybag Yo, 
Beyonce, wherever you go, and you and you and sometimes you might be in them nosebleed sleeps, and you're wondering, man, how can I feel? How can I feel that bass? I mean, what 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 are they using to project bass this far? And what they're actually using is a bunch of horn enclosures. Who pioneered horn enclosures? Are Yam well, Surin Vega and Yamaha. If you look at the stage, especially if you go to an amphitheater, most of those boxes on the stage are horn enclosures. In fact, all of them on the on the stage are horn enclosures. None of them are base. None of them are base reflex enclosures. None of them are base reflex enclosures because base reflex needs something for the base to reverb off of. This is a hemholz resonator. It needs something for the base to reverb off of. So when you open the trunk, the base wave just travels past you. Not so with a horn enclosure. The base wave is all the reverb against that back wall, and based on the other, I try to keep it simple, other qualities of the horn enclosure. Is projected out of this horn mouth. So when you open up the trunk, it just keeps going. Oh well, I ain't gonna see. It's already there. The, the knuckle is already created in the air. You're gonna hear bass no matter what. Which one generates more pressure? Even though they have two different style, different designs. Even though it's more efficient at getting loud. You know it projects more sound. This generates more pressure on average. This can generate a minor amount of pressure as well. But if you're looking for SPL meter and metering, this can generate more pressure because you're packing air. Whereas this one here is just projecting sound. Two different principles of play give you great quality bass. This is used a lot. Okay, if, you, if I say you use an oversized, you, gotta, you, gotta, you won't have enough power to power your 12. So you build an oversized box, okay, to make it more efficient. Well, the horn enclosure is already efficient. No matter what sub you put in it, it's going to get louder way faster than the port enclosure. Let's say you got a 12 in each one. Both of these are 12, 12 boxes, 12 inch for the bass reflex, 12 inch for the horn. On 500 watts here, let's say you get a given dB of 130 dB at 500 watts. Say You take this same 12 and put it in a horn enclosure. On say 300 watts, you'll get that same 130 dB rating. Uh, rating. It's that much more efficient. It gets louder faster. It doesn't need that much power. So now the downside of getting a, a horn enclosure over a bass reflex is that it's significantly larger. Significantly larger. This is this box. I don't know if this video is going to show it, but that horn enclosure for that single 12. It's actually four inches longer and deeper than this comparable base reflex. And as you go up in size, they get considerably bigger. Now, uh, with that being said, this is this is Nathan Stevens box. Mm. This is a dual eight going in a challenger, dual eight horn enclosure. Here, the SD, the horn mouth, is just equal to the SD of the uh, two, two uh, Scar Evil 8s here. It's equal to. It's right equal to. This one here is tuned to 34 hertz. Now, the horn enclosure, how, now, oh, yeah, I can tell you something else about the bandwidth between the two. Hold on, between the bandwidth between the two. Because it's more efficient, this has a, this is peaky. Which means if you tune, I'm thinking, I'm, I say I'm tuning that's where it is. It's tuned to 33 hertz. So you get a bump at 33 hertz, 34 hertz, 35, 30, between 30, 33. So you're going to get a bump at 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. You're going to get a bump here. Not so with a horn enclosure. It's flat. Everything's going to get the same amplification. The same dB rating. So if I'm tuned to 33, is it louder at 33 than anywhere else? Uh... Not really. I'm not going to say louder, but mm, man, how can I explain this? How can I explain this? It plays a while. It, the hump that it has is not, it's not, it's not like this. Okay. It's not like, look at my two fingers. It's hump is kind of more gradual. So, but everything else, instead of falling off on both sides of where it's tuned it, it's flat. So it plays everything louder whereas you might get a bump here with 33 you don't get two plus 33 you get five hertz it, it gets significantly increased 
Here, let's go like seven hertz out of direction. So it's tuned to it's tuned to 33, but we're gonna go 26 to 40. It's gonna play exactly the same output with less power. Yeah, and that's as simple as I could possibly keep it for y'all. <laughs> the difference between this, some people it look like a T line. A horn can take can take power. A T line can't. A T line falls falls off below T below tuning quickly. A horn, not so much. Everything's gonna fall off below tuning, but a horn plays way deeper than even a bass reflex do before it falls off. That's why the loading chamber is a little smaller. It's different principles at play. Uh, yes, this box costs more and more complex me to build than this one. And you can't do a horn enclosure with every speaker. And they are significantly larger, particularly if I wanted to do this for two, it'd be way bigger than that. You would have to have an SUV. You wanted two 12s in a horn enclosure, you're gonna need an SUV. Two 10s, two 8s, two six and a halfs, horn enclosure, yes. Anything larger than a single 12, you're gonna need an SUV because it's gonna be significantly longer. The tuning is dictated by the length of the horn. Whereas with a ported enclosure, it's the volume. Here's the length of the horn. And that's enough information. I want y'all to watch this video maybe over and over again. You'll have a thousand questions about it. Maybe I'll answer them, maybe I won't. <laughs> no, I'm just best with you. you know, I, 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 get, I get it out y'all. But this is, uh, I love making them for eights because you get the most output with very little power and a wider bandwidth. And now I'm finna stain this and I'll probably put it back on the channel after I stain it. But here you are, Nathan. This is your boy. Peace.